東日本大震災の時にこう追い灰を直すボランティアをずっとやっとったんですね。遺灰が傷ついてるのが,がやっぱりなんかねこう心に刺さるというんですかね。で僕がたまたま行って遺灰直すんですよって直す技術があるので。ボランティアでやるんですけどって言ったらで喜んでくれてそれであのそこから毎月送られてくるようになって気づいたらもう100いくつも直すようになってたんですけどで印象的なのはやっぱり遺灰をおじいちゃんとかおばあちゃんって呼ぶんですよねおじいちゃんが帰ってきたおばあちゃんが帰ってきたっていう言い方をするんですよねだからその人のが傷ついてる。ふうに見えちゃうんですね、遺灰って。だからそれがやっぱり治って帰ってきたっていうのはすごい嬉しいみたいで、で、でそれですごい喜ばれましたね。被災された方にも何度もあ,あの行くと待っとってくれるんですよね。あの直したい。直してあの本当はボランティアさんに渡すんですけどボランティアさんが気を利かして鈴木さんが来るからって言ってその人たちがわざわざ待っとってくれてで一言お礼を言うんですよやっぱりすごい嬉しいとかだからそれで交流ができちゃってですね。その一つ一つにストーリーがあってあの例えばお仏壇とかあのを今家が流されたんだけど奇跡的に仏壇が見つかってそれ直したいんだけどって話をでですがあったりするとその仏壇はなんか遠洋漁業に行ったおじいちゃんが行っ,行ってる間におばあちゃんが亡くなってでそのあのおじいちゃんがなおばあちゃんのために何もしてあげられなかったんでって言ってその時の,、えー、あの船で稼いだお金全部突き込んで買った仏壇だよみたいなことを言うとボロボロだけど直してあげたいなと思ったりとかやっぱそれ一つ一つにやっぱストーリーがあるのでそれをあ直せないから処分した方がいいですよとはとても言えなかったですねだからまあそれを持って帰って自分で直したりとかっていうのもやったりとかねやっぱりこう,こうやっぱりその一つ一つって。あの遺灰もそうだし仏壇もそうだけどやっぱり物じゃないのかなっていうのはやっぱり手を合わすものだしそれはあの物と人間の中間ぐらいなねなんかその表現は難しいんですけどただただこうそこらに売ってる冷蔵庫とかそこらに売ってる本当家具とかではない何かちょっと人間とその物の間みたいなものじゃないかなとだから大事にした方が僕はいいなとは思うのでこう。捨てられるものもなんかアートの作品にしたりとかできるといいなとは思ってます。でも本当にああこあのね遺灰を直すことから僕ターニングポイントになっちゃってですね。で今までは仏壇の新商品をずっと考えておったんですよ。あの要するにあの仏壇って何百万もするのであの仏壇のがあの商売としたら売れたら嬉しいんですけどね。遺灰ってえっ、ー、と高くても二三万ぐらいなので。値段の価値がすごい安くて遺灰はまあもう全然自分考えてもなかったんですよ被災地行くまでは。でそ被災地行ったらその仏壇よりも遺灰の方が大事だっていう人にやっぱり出会うわけですよどんどんどんどん。そうすると遺灰って大事だなっていうのをずっと考えててでいつかね自分も遺灰のデザインがしたいなってずっと思ってたんですよ。なんつうか思いが思い,思いをしを忍ぶものっていうものが。形として残ってるのでそれのはやっぱりなんかこうかだから多分ライフスタイルではもうこういう形が似合わないんですけども同じようなもので新しいスタイルっていうのは多分絶対必要だと思うので。
Thanks for watching this fourth and final part in our mini series on Buddhism and waste. This final part is the one that actually showed how I first got in touch with Suzuki Kazuaki. It was not at his shop in southern Aichi prefecture, but in the disaster zone. And uh, I first went there in April 2011, uh, a mere month after the tsunami. That's when these shots uh, were taken. Shoji was driving, I was just filming out. And as we turned around the corner, I, you know, you, 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 you see this, this gap happen, you know, between seem, seemingly normal life, just, you know, the minimal, relatively minimal destruction caused by the earthquake itself. And then you turn around the corner or turn into this disaster zone into the, 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 the tsunami zone where, where, where nothing is just left, just everything flattened, these houses crushed, cars hanging in trees, people walking around with luggage, suitcases, trying to collect their belongings. The tsunami zone had a very distinct smell that I couldn't forget for months. Like even after returning to Germany, whenever I saw a construction site, these memories, the smell would pop up in my mind, like it messes with you. And I cannot imagine even how horrible it must have been for those who lost their existence. For me, reviewing the footage that I shot in the disaster zone was more like, okay, there is a scene of destruction and I find, I'm trying to find the the scene that shows most destruction, you know, most cars hanging in trees, not only one, but two cars and this house that, you know, is totally smashed, that it has to be here and, and, and the car has to be there. And that's, that's how I uh, envisioned this footage. But when I actually showed this footage to people in the disaster zone who used to live there, then they see these places as they were before the disasters, you know, they, they see this is where that and that person lived. This is where that shop was, you know. I think the material destruction of the livelihood and of the material objects designed to uh, venerate ancestral souls, like memorial tablets and Buddhist household altars, temples themselves, uh, the destruction shows very much uh, the significance of these objects that may not necessarily be noticed in, t in, in normal times, in, in, in times of peace. You know, the, the general stance often is the way it's portrayed in Japan is that these rituals and are outdated and these graves have no longer a meaning for in many people's lives. Or many try to, you know, abandon them as they try to abandon the, the household altars and, you know, put them to waste. But uh, that's only one part of the story. And I think this final part is so important because it shows that not all of Japan, not everyone in Japan is throwing these objects, uh, material culture of Buddhism away. What Suzuki-san introduced here very much matches what I experienced in my field research at Buddhist temples in Northeast Japan that have been struck by the tsunami or otherwise affected. You know, people looking for these objects, for family photos, for mortuary tablets, household altars, these kinds of things. If you have a friend in Tohoku or know somebody or so, you know, why don't you just write them a letter, give them a call, just let people know that you are still you know, didn't forget about this topic, you know. Hmm, I don't want to use this video to promote the channel in this way. But rather, instead of commenting or liking, subscribing, use that momentum, use that energy to call somebody. Ha! Yeah, that's what it... <coughs> that would be my wish. <coughs> yes, that would be my wish for, uh, for the viewer if you liked this video. You don't have to like it, but call somebody that you know in the disaster zone or a friend or whatever, right? Or, or do a little bit of research yourself about it, you know? And if you're interested in learning more about the subject of religion and disaster, then I highly recommend the Open Access Special Issue in Asian Ethnology, edited by Levi McLaughlin, Michael Feener. There's four editors, I got it. Levi McLaughlin, Philip Fountain, Michael Feener, and Patrick Daly. It's called Salvage and Salvation, Religion and Disaster Relief in Asia. I also contributed a research note to that special issue in Asian ethnology, uh, where I describe a little bit of the ethical and emotional challenges of doing film work in the disaster zone, if you're interested in that or more broadly outlining Buddhist disaster relief initiatives. Uh, I wrote an article on that and that's published in a book by Mark Mullins and Nakano Koichi and it's called 
disasters and social crisis in contemporary Japan. Sometimes I gotta check my little new phone here. <laughs> yeah, I, for I forget those, those titles of books. <laughs> it's embarrassing, but it happens. I love you all and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. This was uh, the Buddhism and Waste mini-series, but there's lots more to come. Believe me. <laughs> Take care.